So what I'd like to do now before we have our last presenter is just do a very short uh, chant. And what we're going to do is we're all going to call out very big voices and I love to see that we have folks on the street and are holding up signs to, because I don't know about you all, but every time I mention this to somebody, they, first of all, they never heard of it, and guess what? Once they do learn about it, they were like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. So thank you, mainstream media. So water is life, 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 water is life. 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 Okay, thanks. Okay, Alex, you ready? Now again, I'll let you do your own self intro. Thanks. I am in admiration of the people at Standing Rock standing in front of that pipeline. The problem, though, is our almost infinite reliance on the fossil fuel industry. It feeds us, it transports us, it heats us, and we have an almost infinite demand for it. And as a result, our government allows them to do almost anything they want. And they have done incredibly dangerous things. Pipelines which are bound to eventually fail. The uh, crude oil trains of which a number of disasters have already ruined areas. The, store, the fracking industry is all about this fossil fuel and is one of the most dangerous processes we presently face. And let us not forget the storage of hazardous petrochemicals like they're trying to do under Seneca Lake. This is also, we can continue this, petro, this uh, fossil fuel economy. And what happens with this economy is these petrochemicals and these fossil fuels end up in our water. It's obvious when we have a disaster like we have in the, had in the Gulf Coast. It's less, it's less obvious when we have fracking. And it's less obvious when a buried pipeline has a failure in its weld and leaks oil continuously for more than a decade. Into the, and it ends up in the water supply. Like happened in Minnesota. We need to break our reliance on these petro on this fossil fuel industry because that's the only way we can protect our water and the worst thing about it is we have to do it we cannot rely on the government the epa has let us down over and over and over again about the protection of water i found an article from the 80s about the hazards of and i'm going to mispronounce this plurifluor Perfluorotonic sulfonic acid. It's a chemical that in the 80s I found an article saying how dangerous it was to human beings. It was cancer causing and fortunately the EPA was right on that and in 91 they set some restrictions on the level that were far higher than what anyone was asking for. And these were kept in place to 2016, 25 years later when finally under intense scientific pressure they lowered the acceptable level of PFO S and PFO A by more than a sixth. That's right. They went from 27 parts per billion to four. All of a sudden water in places like Newburgh, New York and Hosick Falls was undrinkable for levels that were four or more times higher than what the acceptable level was now but had been deemed perfectly safe just a month earlier if you don't think this can happen look at the look at the water report from 2015 right here in Monroe County it states chemicals on them on there like str like strontium and chromium 6 these chemicals presently have no 
The EPA has no level or regulation about them and is asking water authorities to, even though they know they're dangerous, asking water authorities to test for them to let them know what level is in their water so they can set a standard above what people presently have in their water. The science is irrelevant. What's convenient for the governments involved is what's important. And let's not talk about microbeads or estrogen or the dumping of chemicals. We have enough hydrochlorine, enough hydrocodeine in most water supplies that it's measurable. Our water, we aren't even trying to keep it safe. And the worst thing is, I'm talking about here in Rochester. Rochester's water is filled with all sorts of these chemicals that aren't measured and filled with chemicals that someday the EPA is going to lower their standard down and it's going to be lower than what our present level is. And I haven't even mentioned lead yet. We still have lead pipes going from the main to almost every single house in Rochester. And recent studies have shown that more than half of the schools that test their water supply for lead find an unacceptably high level of lead in their water. It are elementary schools. Water is life. And until we make this an issue, until we accept that we have to abandon the fossil fuels, the petrochemicals, and the other things that are destroying our water system. We are going to continue screaming in the wilderness with nobody listening. It's good to see so many people here, and it is so heartening to see people standing in front of a pipeline in Standing Rock. But only one political party has endorsed water is an essential element of life and the, and the fossil fuel industry is a source of damage and fracking to have a permanent ban and that's the Green Party. And I know if you know me, you certain I had to bring that up in some way. But and look, this is an election year and what I believe is messages are sent through losing candidates. When the major parties see that there is a revolution of people voting for the Greens, even if it's 5%, the parties are going to take notice. And this is one of the best ways I believe we can send messages to our elected officials. Because I'd like to think it's not too late. But every time I see another person sentenced down in Seneca for trying to stop the dangerous storage of propane under Seneca Lake, I realize the cards are stacked against us and we have much more work to do. So let's get out and do it. Thank you. Is not required. You can choose to not participate. There is currently a thoroughfare of automobiles over there, fossil fuel consuming creatures. We can choose to have a circle, a moment of silence, a moment of meditation in the middle of the street for just a moment and then disperse peacefully. We can demonstrate our ability to shut it down with our collective will, as well as hold space for water. We are made of water. This planet is mostly covered in water. And if we continue to pollute the water, we will not be water anymore. So I would like you to join me and my fellow strange compatriots over there in making a circle. Certain ones of us will shut down traffic on this side. And if you all go right across the street, and stay this side of the curb. We're gonna get in a nice big circle and we're gonna sit down just for 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Can we do this? All right, let's do it, come on. Water is life.